When studying biomolecules, we are often looking at a wide range of characteristics, from protein interactions to enzyme kinetics. Surface plasmon resonance, abbreviated as SPR, is one of the most diverse bioanalytic techniques that can provide a multitude of this qualitative and quantitative data in just one experiment. Specifically, this non-invasive technique can provide information about binding, such as whether or not a molecule binds to another target molecule, specificity, such as the extent that a molecule cross-reacts with other molecules, concentration, how much of a molecule is present and active, kinetics, such as the rates of association and dissociation, and even binding affinity, aka how strong the binding interaction is. Overall, this technique is commonly used to study biomolecular interactions between molecules ranging from ions to viruses. The SPR instrumentation used to investigate these interactions are commercially available and the most popular ones used are manufactured by Biocore. The interactions are specifically monitored on a removable sensor chip by the SPR detector. The samples and reagents are held together within the instrument and are delivered to the chip by a microfluidic delivery system. This system also supplies the sensor chip with buffer and removes waste from it into the bottles attached to the instrument. Let's talk about the sensor chip now. This is where all the match happens. In this chip, there is a glass slide coated with a thin layer of gold film. On top of this film is commonly a carboxylated dextran matrix to which the ligand is attached and immobilized and this matrix provides a hydrophilic environment for the binding interactions. Many different matrices can be used for immobilization. It just depends on the nature of the molecules being immobilized. As you can see, there is a wedge-shaped beam of polarized light that is focused through a prism onto the center chip. The reflected light or SPR response is monitored by the detector and the angle at which the minimum light reflection occurs is calculated. This SPR or resonance angle is related to the refractive index, which is also related to the mass of the molecules attached to the sensor chip. The refractive index calculated for just the ligand attached to the matrix serves as the baseline measure. The analyte or other binding partner then gets injected in a buffer or aqueous solution over the chip and either binds or gets washed back out into the waste bottle. As the analyte binds, the SPR angle changes, which causes the refractive index to change. It is this change in the refractive index, referred to as the response unit, that is measured over the course of the analysis to determine binding interactions. The instrumentation used for SPR experiments allow for the data to be collected and processed in real time. Therefore, you can observe the binding interactions almost instantly. This data is collected using a software that corresponds to the SPR instrument. The result from the change in the refractive index is displayed as a sensorgram, where the binding response is plotted on the y-axis against time plotted on the x-axis. Once the ligand is immobilized, a baseline response measure is collected. A positive response can then be viewed as the analyte is injected over the chip and binds to the ligand. This response then decreases once a buffer solution is injected, which causes the two molecules to dissociate. After the analysis is complete, a regeneration solution is injected, which removes the analyte and provides a clean slate for the next analysis. Here's an example of what you might see during the real-time analysis. It won't be quite that fast, but you get the idea. If there is no binding interaction between the molecules, then you can imagine that the data will just show a flat line straight across the sensor gram. This technique comes with a lot of advantages. As previously stated, this is a real-time technique in which the data can be viewed instantly over the course of the analysis. It is also a label-free technique, therefore your molecule of interest doesn't have to be tagged. It can be used to study interactions between any type of molecule, from proteins to nucleic acids and even viruses in whole cells. These molecules can also range from 150 to 10 million Daltons in size. Light doesn't penetrate the samples, so they can be colored or opaque, 
and the samples don't require completely pure preparations beforehand. Lastly, up to 30 consecutive analyses can be run in just a single experiment. Despite the hype of this technique, it does come with some downsides. The sensor chips used for the analysis are fairly expensive, and the ligand immobilization step can be the most time-consuming and tedious step. In addition, although it is mass-sensitive, binding of low molecular weight compounds becomes more of a challenge to detect. But hey, these disadvantages don't sound too bad. Overall, SPR is a very powerful tool for analyzing biomolecular interactions, and it can be particularly useful in pharmaceutical development, quality control, and even your basic life science analyses.